You know, sitting an SOS telling me, guys, save me from this video. A lot of people ask the question, why do you actually need one of these power stations, these portable power packs? Because I can just get a little portable uh, charger for my phone, for the USB charger, all of that. And plug it into my car. Uh, I can get a little inverter in my car. I can do that. Yes, you can, of course. But when you're parked up at night in your tent, maybe, maybe in your roof tent trying to hide from the lions, you're not going to run outside and plug it in, right? Well, howdy campers, how you guys doing out there? Um, I'm sure when you guys go camping, you have as much stuff as we do, maybe even more. And what that means is you need a lot of power. You need to charge your fridge. The one big thing in your van is your fridge. Along with that, you've got all these other things that you travel around with. You've got your laptop, obviously, to do some video editing. You've got your iPad as well. You've got your mobile phone. Don't leave home without it. You've got your uh, DSLR if you like, and also one of these bad boys maybe, who knows. And that's all well and good. That'll all fit in your van, not a big deal, and you can travel around and be cool. But what is powering these things? One thing I can tell you is this is also part of your kit. And this. And this. So it doesn't look all slick and everything's all there and working very well. You've got a lot of other cables and stuff lying around and that's all well and good. But how are you gonna load this stuff? How are you gonna charge this? Where is this gonna plug into? A really long extension cable? No. Let's have another look at something new here. We've already done one of these videos. I'll put the link up here or in the description below, um, which is a pretty good piece of kit. Now we've leveled up a little bit and I'll tell you why in a second. This here is a Fossi Bot 800. Did I say that right? Something like that. Strange name. Pretty cool little unit. It's not too heavy. It's about 700... 700? Centi... Grams. How does that work? It's about 7 kilos this. It's about the same size as the other one. There's a big major difference. And you can maybe see it on the back if you zoom in well enough. 800 watts. This is quite a nice little unit. I'll do the side and we'll flip around the other side. This is a European style plug with the earth on it. It's got a little button up here, which I'll get to later. On the front, you've got a little light and a beep. Also a little flashing light, which is cool. Pretty standard stuff. You've got your display up here, on off button. Uh, you've got USB C's, three of those. See how it's moving forward. And two proper USB 3.0. Got a little cigarette lighter thing there. 12 volt there, which is not really used that much, but it's nice to have. And on this side, got your charging port for your 220. And that's one of these cables here. This comes with the unit. Standard plug like that. That plugs into there. And they also give you what a jumble it is here. Uh, the option to charge it with your solar panel, which is pretty cool. It's got its dedicated port in there, which is quite nice. I'm going to do from 50 watts to 200 watts solar panel charging possibility, which is quite nice. We've got a 100 watt panel, the portable one, the Renergy, uh, which will plug into here nicely and you can charge as you go, which is cool. Uh, it's 512 watt hours which is pretty cool. And what I do like on the charging cable, 400 watts charging, which means you charge this thing in about under an hour, which is a big change to what used to be the case. It's obviously lithium, which means it's light enough, uh, but it's quite substantial, which is nice, which means it's nicely built, it's quite tough. On the front, we have our screen, which is quite cool. It gives you the options of the AC, the DC, the USB. What I really like is that it gives you the amount of watts being used, which is quite nice. A uh, nice carry handle here. I've opted for one like this. It's quite handy. It's not like two of these that you have to fold up. This one's already in there and it's pretty sturdy. What we're going to do now is actually have a look at if it really works or is it just a nice big paperweight. So let's plug in some things see how much wattage they use. 
Right, so I hope this is clear enough for you here. It says we've got 94% uh, battery capacity at the moment, which means 30 hours. I'm not sure what that means in real life terms. Uh, the input uh, in the amount of watts and the output. So what we can do here is plug in our fridge, which is the main big difference because the other one at 300 watts doesn't have enough peak power to pull a fridge because the fridge, this one, as we'll see, pulls quite a lot of power when it starts up and then it comes right back down to 50 or 60 watts. So you saw the power, the peak, the power surge, how it just peaked as you plugged it in and now we're back down to 40 watts again, um, which is really cool, this is quite stable. Uh, what we can't really do at this point is test how long it will take to keep this fridge running, but you can work it out at 36 watts at the moment. Um, that's hardly any power at all. What is really nice about this unit is that it has a UPS function. Demonstrate that quickly by putting the power in. Extension lead from the wall socket. Plug that in there. And if you see that little yellow thing, it says UPS. And what that means is that it's charging the um, unit itself, but the power that's going to the fridge is going straight through from the wall unit. So it's a UPS system which keeps the battery topped up. As soon as you maybe lose power, let's say you're living in a country like perhaps South Africa where they have a few blackouts with a power supply. Uh, as soon as the power goes off, you can see there 233 watts, that's mains. And it's drawing 33 from the fridge. As soon as the power goes, we're on the battery power of the unit alone, which is pretty cool. That will keep your battery full, it keeps it going. As soon as the power falls away, you've still got power. So let's pick a cable, USB-C. We've got three options here, 20, 20, and 100. Let's see what 100 does. I'll turn off the fridge over here. So each section has their own button, which means you have to activate it. Here we have the 12 volt one. We're using the USB-C just to see what's going on with the phone. Actually 100% charged, but you can see it's pulling about 10 watts there, which is okay. What some of you do maybe travel around with is one of these. Also USB-C, let's see how much watts that takes. So there's your charging stage, which is pretty cool. Let's see what a normal USB connector here. The USB-C, plug in your iPad. You can see the draw coming up there. A lot of you still traveling around with one of these. It's got its own little battery charger battery charger let's see what this does I have to switch it on here at the side there you can see AC charging this now drawing 24 watts total which is like nothing so that's all good all we can do is unplug these and the drone see what this draws. This isn't drawing anything because it's 100% full. The nice part is you can change your items and in the display you can work out what each thing uses as it's charging up. So let's see what the fridge does. Peak draw there. And there you have it. So as we charge our fridge, try and chill it down a little bit. Uh, you can see the peak draw there, which is about 250. Sometimes it peaks at 600, which is something to think about when you get one of these units. Uh, 800 watts, I would think, is probably minimum when you're traveling a uh, long distance, especially in your landing, overlanding expeditions, all of that stuff. You can charge it with a solar panel as well. So while you're driving along the way, you just plug it in and it'll charge. And when you get to your destination, you've got enough power for the evening, especially with a fridge, cameras, phones, drones, iPads, all of that stuff. So I think about this as a good option. 
Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Nice build quality. It's not too heavy. Uh, I like the way that it charges very quickly. Uh, so to fill it up again, one hour on a wall plug, which is really cool. Got a lot of options. USB C is coming in big time, which is nice. Nice that it's got flaps. Uh, which is very good for dust. I don't know how you guys travel, but our land is always full of dust. The only thing it doesn't do is uh, wireless charging, but I don't have a phone that wireless charges anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I think it's pretty good value, I've got to say. Uh, if you look at the price, it's pretty good value these days from where it was just a couple of years ago. So now it's very accessible. Maybe plug a um, multi-bank on the other side run your laptop, your fridge, your phones, all of that stuff, even your Wi-Fi uh, router. And if the power does dip for some reason, and you guys know exactly who I'm talking about, uh, it's not a big deal, because the power instantly kicks in and you carry around as if nothing is wrong. So guys, there you go, the Fossy Bot. I didn't make up the name, but there it is. Hey, tell me what, portable power station. If you want to zoom in, here are the specs, I'll put them in the description below as well. Uh, nice looking little unit, I'm quite a fan of green as well. There you go, next time you're on the road, think about it, chuck it in the car, you're good. Thanks for watching guys, hope this was informative, maybe a little bit entertaining as well. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one and keep rolling. What does it keep charging? Cheers.